Hi everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Dr. Nicole and today I have the pleasure of having Jody Cohen as my guest. Jody is an expert in using essential oils to support health and wellness, particularly for families, and makes some of the best oils out there, in my opinion. Um, I've had the opportunity to try them, and I use them and love them. Um, I've known Jody for a few years now and am just always blown away by the knowledge that she has about oils, about how to use them, particularly for what we're going to talk about today, which is using them for kids and kids who may have behavioral, emotional, mental health, developmental kinds of challenges. Um, and as a mom herself, she gets that. Um, Jody is a best-selling author, award-winning journalist, and founder of Vibrant Blue Oils, where she has combined her training in nutritional therapy and aromatherapy to create unique proprietary blends of organic and wild-crafted essential oils that help her clients heal from brain-related challenges, including anxiety, insomnia, and autoimmunity. Welcome to the show, Jody. Thank you so much for having me. So I'm excited to dive into this because essential oils, it seems like, are all the rage right now, right? They're everywhere on social media, everywhere when you go to the stores, like people are talking about essential oils. Um, but I think that really parents, by and large, are confused about how, what do I really do with these? How do I use them? How could they benefit my kids? Particularly when we're talking about some of the brain-based kinds of things that a lot of the families that listen to this show um, are dealing with. So I wanna dive in by having you share just some basics. What are essential oils? What's the history behind them? Um, and, and, and what are they? Yeah, so they're, they're the highly concentrated essences of plants. So basically, they're distilled plants. So we know plants have been used throughout the centuries for medicine. They are actually the basis for most pharmaceutical drugs. And if you concentrate them, it's, it's like a, you know, double whammy dose, you know, like one cup of peppermint tea, you know, a drop of essential oil is probably like seven of them. Mm -hmm. So the more you concentrate things, the more they can, um, you know, certain, certain challenges that we face, you, it's almost like you're so far out of balance that you need to just knock yourself back into balance. And sometimes really concentrated doses can do that. And especially if they're combined and created to put something back in balance in a very specific way. You know, like if you're zinc deficient, you're going to mega dose on zinc until mm -hmm. you're back up at normal, and then you'll kind of go back into maintenance. So oils can be used, um, I hate to say like medicine. I think that what it is is that when your body is in balance, it functions properly. When you're able to eliminate the toxins you accumulate, when you're able to sleep and nourish yourself with healthy foods, you can return to balance and heal. And when you're far out of balance, oils are a more powerful, concentrated way to help you get back into balance again. Mm. I really like that visual or that idea of getting into balance. And there's probably a lot of people listening who are going, huh, I could use that. My kids could use that, that idea of getting back into balance. And I think what you said is really important about um, the, the power of plants. And, and I think that goes unrecognized. Many people aren't aware, you know, you touched on that most pharmaceuticals, most drugs that we used are based on, you know, the, the compounds in plants. And so when we're talking about these essences of plants, these essential oils, um, I think a lot of people just think, oh, that's kind of fluffy and nice and it smells nice, but actually there's real power behind that, right? Yeah, well, and if you think about it, our whole ecosystem works together. Like if you've ever read those books about how trees communicate and sometimes one tree will share water with another tree and we kind of, it's like a community. We all work together and humans are biofamiliar with plants. We're part of that community. That's why when we eat plants or the ethically raised animals that feed on plants, it helps us to return to balance. So there's, there's a symmetry in nature that I think... Um, working with plants you know we're just we're naturally connected and so it's not our body can process plants in a very easy way and it doesn't cause weird side effects because we're familiar with that mm -hmm. makes me think of i was just um looking at a brand new research study published this week um about uh, the connection between time spent in nature and yes. around plants and problems that kids have. And yes. what this study looked at was that as the amount of time increase that kids were spending out 
with trees, grasses, plants in nature, the number of problems that parents were reporting in terms of things like attention issues, behavior issues, you know, anxieties, those kinds of things went down. And it's something that I've just, you know, inherently known and observed from working with kids. But that's, that's really fascinating and something I don't think that we think about enough, that connection to nature. And yeah. that really ties in with what you're saying about sort of that community and and being around plants and, and that being something that, that can just be so healing for us. Well, it also has to do with, you know, there are rhythms of the earth, right? There's night and day, there's the moon cycles, and we have these natural rhythms, the rhythms of when we're supposed to sleep, the rhythms of when we're supposed to get hungry. And the more, and, and our rhythms are connected to the rhythms, obviously, of nature and the planet. So spending time in nature kind of resets our rhythms. Mm -hmm. And when our rhythms are functioning correctly, like especially, you know, with children, if their sleep cycle is off, that can really throw them off. Mm -hmm. If their eating cycle is off, if they have a bunch of snacks before dinner and then they're not hungry for dinner and then they're starving before bedtime, the more you're kind of on cue and on your rhythm, or, you know, babies, like if they didn't nap and then they get overtired, it's really about kind of keeping us in the flow and keeping us in the rhythm. Mm -hmm. And oils can do that. You know, uh, food can do that. There are a lot of things that, you know, light and darkness patterns. Mm -hmm. The more we kind of align with the way our bodies are supposed to work, the easier it is for them to work properly. You know, like mm -hmm. when we bike with the wind in our back, it's way easier to go mm -hmm. faster than when we're biking into the wind. Mm -hmm. So what we're really trying to do with oils is help everyone kind of line up so things just flow easier. So it's easier. And, you know, being a parent is so hard to begin with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when your kid is challenging, it's even harder. Yeah. So what I love about oils is it's just one, it's an easy way to make your life easier. And it sounds like it's a great tool, not only for the kids, which we're going to delve into, but for ourselves as parents. Absolutely. Too, right. To support ourselves and, and all of us as a family, in addition to maybe the specific needs of our children. Yeah, well, I mean, especially, you know, maybe there are perfect parents listening who've never had their child irritate them. So if the <laughs> child irritates you, if you're already irritated, you know, sometimes you overreact in ways that you regret later. But if you're in a, a more resilient place where you're able to recognize like, oh, I'm finding that irritating and I'm going to handle it in a way that, you know, I, I really, the best me shows up as. It allows you, when you're more in balance, you're able to show up as your best self and your best parent. Yeah. And your best partner and your best friend, you know, it just, it makes things easier because you're more grounded and stable. And so you don't get thrown off as easily. And I think all of us, if we're being honest with ourselves as parents can use more of that, right? Yeah. Um, so let's dive into why essential oils are, are a good choice to use with kids who have these kinds of challenges, whether it's developmental disabilities, mental health is issues, just you know, more intense, you know, strong-willed kinds of behavioral issues. Um, why, why are oils a, a great thing to use? Well, I think there are two big reasons. One thing is that the brain is, plays such an important role in kind of how signals and chemicals are sent to the rest of the body. And it's really hard to get the right remedy into the right area of the brain because the brain is protected. There's this blood-brain barrier that keeps things out. And our sense of smell, our olfactory channel, is the fastest way into the brain. So mm -hmm. unlike other remedies, you know, like they can't do chemotherapy in the brain because they can't get the molecules in there. Mm -hmm. People who have taken melatonin supplements, the melatonin doesn't necessarily get into the brain. It's easier if you use um, a sublingual formula mm -hmm. under the tongue. Mm -hmm. Similarly, oils have kind of the perfect chemical composition composition they're super super small mm -hmm. and they're fat soluble and the brain is mostly fat so it's kind of like nature created this perfect formula to get things into the brain and when you get things into the brain you can help to reset some of those cycles so the sleep cycle or the hunger cycle or the kind of nervous system cycle where you're either where they're, they're either able to be calm and focus and heal or they're so agitated and kind of wound up that it's, it's almost impossible to get them to make eye contact. Mm -hmm. So that's the first reason, that they're naturally um, chemically organized to be ideal to get into the brain. And the second challenge is that so many people, especially children with challenges, have digestive impairment. You know, they might have leaky gut. They might have toxic overload. There's so much going on in their system that it's challenging for them to assimilate remedies through the digestive channel. 
And so the fact that you can topically apply something through the skin and it gets into the system or smell it, that's a really nice backdoor mm -hmm. for parents, especially, I mean, I remember when my kids were little and I would try to get them to take supplements and <laughs> I would grind them up and add them to applesauce or mix them in smoothies or bake muffins. And it was just, it felt like such a battle to actually get the remedy into their system. So the idea that I could rub something on their feet when they were sleeping, that felt a lot easier. And I think that that right there, I'm sure is resonating with so many of the parents who are listening who feel like, yeah, I, I know all these great things that I you know, could be giving my kid or should be giving my kid, but getting the compliance, getting them to, to take it is a challenge. And so what you're saying is that this is really um, low barrier to entry. This is something that we can accomplish with virtually any kid, um, even doing it while they're sleeping and, and have some benefit. Um, and, and I think that really um, is reassuring for a lot of parents who want to be using you know different kinds of, of remedies and approaches but are struggling with how to do that and so this this is a, a relatively simple way without a lot of um, you know head butting and, and that kind of thing um, you know to be able to use these with kids but it's a nice ritual too like my kids always loved it when I rubbed it on their feet and my daughter went through a period where she would have anxiety at school and there's we have one blend called calm that she used to carry in her backpack and you know she would just put a little bit on her heart when she felt anxious and then she'd feel better it was usually social situations like recess or lunch mm -hmm. and the teacher noticed right away and how empowering for a child you know because anxiety can be so scary and alienating and to know like oh I, I have a tool that I can use and I can feel better and I've seen that with kids at the clinic too whether it's kids with you know chronic headache issues um, or kids with the anxiety or they feel themselves just getting worked up and overwhelmed or they're having trouble focusing having that oil that they can use themselves that they can start to recognize when am I feeling this way what's going on and that they can have you know the power to to apply that and to do something for themselves um, you know that helps them in that moment I think that's very empowering and and very helpful for them when also things like constipation I mean that that can be such a big issue and it can get so stressful and we we have an oil we have two we have one that you can apply right behind the earlobe on the mastoid bone on the vagus nerve and that helps the whole motility cascade mm -hmm. in the digestive tract but then also that calm oil when you put it on your tummy you know constipation can be anxiety related and so instead of it becoming a whole conundrum you can send your child in the bathroom by themselves with oils and empower them and then it kind of it, it takes the um, the edge off of something that's already stressful. And, you know, that's such an important part of healing is eliminating your waste and your toxins. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, you touched on some of the reasons why these can be, you know, so helpful to use. I'm wondering, too, it, it strikes me that, um, you know, so many of the things that um, are, are recommended for kids with these issues center around medications. Um, and medications that can have very, very scary and negative side effect profiles. Um, can you talk about that a little bit with the essential oils? Because it strikes me that one of the great things about using essential oils is that we have you know, the, the possibility of getting benefits in these areas without all of the potentially dangerous side effects that we might get from some other kinds of treatments. Yeah, and I really try not to go negative on anything. The, the one thing I will say is that, you know, um, valerian root kind of was the, the formulation for Valium or white willow bark became aspirin. But in order to patent a drug, you have to make some changes. It can't be found in nature, which is why, you know, vitamin D has never been patented because somebody would make a million on it. <laughs> but when you change it, you have to modify it ever so slightly. So the way someone described it is if you hold your hand up in the mirror and you see the mirror reflection of your hand, it's kind of your hand, but it's backwards. Mm -hmm. So when they make these drugs, um, you know, it's not, not everything is kind of in alignment with nature. So there might be some mild changes that, can trigger different side effects. And since um, oils come from nature, it's unlikely that they'll have side effects. You know, that said, I think that um, there are, 
there's certain ways that you can use them that I think are more effective. Like mm -hmm. the analogy that I use, um, our 90 year old neighbor has a cell phone that his grandchildren gave him mm -hmm. and he uses it to make phone calls and to receive phone calls. And my children are always trying to teach him, you know, you can take photos with it. You can <laughs> send email, you can get directions. And that's not really of interest to him. He just wants it to be his phone and that's not wrong. But it's just scratching the surface of the potential. And I think with oils, you know, you can certainly put lavender in your bath and it's amazing and it smells good and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Or you can use oils, you can combine them into blends that are able to help you heal in even more powerful ways. So I think that um, what's nice about oils, it, it, they are pretty natural. They don't usually cause side effects. And you can combine them in a way where your body is very familiar with them. And so it allows the body to return to balance and it makes it easier for you to heal. Mm. Love it. So let's get into some specific types of oils because right. I know, you know, parents listening are probably having lots of questions about, you know, what, what should, which oils should I use for different things? And so, right. you know, one of the really common ones that comes up for kids with this whole range of issues is anxiety. That is such a driving force for a lot of the behavioral kinds of challenges and issues that kids are dealing with. So what are your um, suggestions around oils for anxiety? Well, the first thing, I mean, you know, there's so many things that are happening in the body and the brain when you're anxious. It's mostly, you know, we're, we're really designed for survival, right? And so when we see any kind of danger, be it a real danger, a, a thought that's danger, we our nervous system switches into that like fight, flight, freeze zone called the sympathetic state of the nervous system. And that gets turned on. And I remember when my kids were little, they used to always say, you know, connect before you correct. Mm -hmm. Like if your kid did something wrong and you're upset and they're upset and you start to scream at them, they're not going to hear you because they're in that, you know, dangerous sympathetic state where the whole body is kind of mobilized to either fight or flee. So anything that doesn't help you fight or flee, like your ability to digest food, detoxify, or even focus on your mom is kind of turned off. Like with my son, I used to point at my nose and say, look at my nose. And he couldn't, he was all over the place because mm -hmm. he was in that sympathetic state. The easiest way to get your child back into that rest, digest, and heal parasympathetic state, which is the first state to kind of getting them out of danger zone so that they can start to deal with the anxiety, is to help them drop into this parasympathetic state. Mm -hmm. And this is a little complicated, but I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible. The off on switch between this fight or flight sympathetic state and rest and digest parasympathetic state is this vagus nerve, this very important cranial nerve that starts at the very back of the head and winds around on both sides right behind the ear. And it's most accessible to the surface right there. So we have an oil that you can put right behind the earlobe, kind of on that bone if you feel it. And that is kind of the on-off switch. So they're agitated, they're all over the place. You can put that oil right there and it helps them just drop in to that rest, digest, and heal, where all of a sudden you can even try this at home, say like, hey, look at my nose. They can't do it. Put the oil on and try it again. And you'll notice, you know, their pupils will kind of constrict a little. They'll be able to focus. You'll, it, it's good for you too. You'll have a much better connection and a much better experience. And so that's kind of the first step is telling the brain to calm down. It's okay. You're safe. There's no danger. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be, you know, anxious and on high alert. It's safe. And so that's, that's a really good one to start with. And then another one, um, the next step, the brain then sends these chemical signals um, through it. It starts at the hypothalamus and goes to the pituitary and winds up at the adrenal glands, which release the stress hormones. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that message kind of, you know, they're so prepared for emergency that they're constantly releasing the stress hormones. And so if you can tell them, you know, the emergency's over, it's safe. It's kind of like the fire drill at school, right? You can go back in the classroom now, you're good. And you can do that with an adrenal oil that's also great for moms that you can just put over your adrenals on your low back. Mm -hmm. And another trick that I learned from our colleague, Titus Chu, mm -hmm. sometimes anxiety is related to an overactive um, right frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. And so one way to calm that down is to smell something mm -hmm. through your left nostril because then that turns on the left frontal lobe and it puts you into balance. So it could be lavender, it could be um, the parasympathetic blend and adrenal blend. It's just a really easy trick. And for anyone who's prone to anxiety attacks, um, 
that works really quickly. Mm, great. So you mentioned the parasympathetic blend and the adrenal blend. What, what types of um, plant oils are in those blends? What, what kinds of um, oils are especially good for um, this getting into the parasympathetic state or, or this sort of relaxing or managing anxiety? Yeah, and there are there are definitely single oils that are good for that. I tend to work for with blends because I think when you combine things, it yep. makes them more powerful. Like for example, the um, parasympathetic blend is two oils. It's clove and lime. Clove is super stimulatory and lime has the smallest molecules. So it gets it, you know, the nerve is accessible here. It's kind of the fastest way to get into the system and calm it down. And it smells amazing. It's one of my favorites. It sounds like such a weird combination if people are like, hmm, clove and lime, but it, it smells amazing. Yeah, and one of the other interesting things, um, clove actually has been used in dentistry through the years. So sometimes, not so much for little kids, but for uh, us moms who might have um, you know, any kind of um, germs in the mouth, mm -hmm. the trigeminal nerves in the mouth kind of drains right around that point behind the ear as well. And so that can cause, you know, a bit of a bottleneck just mm -hmm. in terms of signaling. And so clove kind of goes in and cleans up the bottleneck mm. a little bit. It's like think of a traffic jam and suddenly traffic starts moving. It just allows the signal to go through a little bit better. And um, the adrenal blend is a combination. It's uh, thyme, rosemary, manuka, frankincense, and um, galbalum. And mm. it, it seems like a weird combination, but there's something about what, what we're really trying to do is um, create a similar balance to what healthy adrenals look like. Like if you're ever playing tennis with a better player or running, you know, I used to run a nine minute mile and sometimes I'd run with eight minute mile people and you, you find yourself keeping the pace. You kind of match um, what you're put up with. So if you overlay um, kind of what healthy adrenal tissue, th that resonance, it mm -hmm. sometimes rises to that occasion and puts the organ back in balance. Mm, nice. You mentioned um, lavender too, and I think that's one that many people are familiar with. Either you know, you Lavender's can, amazing. Yeah, yeah. And La it, Lavender is like the all-around player on the soccer team. Got you know, it. it can do everything. And it's, it's great for kids. It's really balancing. It can be What's nice about it is that um, it kind of matches where you're at. So if you need to be calmed down, it can calm you down. If you have a headache and you need to focus, it can be used for that. L lavender across the board, I think, works nicely for most people for most conditions. So it's like an MVP kind of oil for sure. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> How yes. about sleep? Because you mentioned sleep and, and a lot of kids with developmental disabilities, with mental health issues, um, sleep is, is a major issue for them, either not being able to settle down, to fall asleep, not being able to sleep through the night. Um, what are some of the essential oils that you'd find are useful for that? Well, definitely lavender. It kind of, you know, it's different levels. And I think there, there are different issues with falling asleep and then also staying asleep. Mm -hmm. So if it's just a little bit, you just want to calm your kid, they're a little restless, lavender on the feet. Or I love actually Mark Hyman's um, Epsom salt bath, two mm -hmm. cups of Epsom salt, one cup of baking soda, a couple mm -hmm. drops of lavender. Mm -hmm. Mix the lavender with the Epsom salt before you add water. And you can just cut that in half for a kid. So one mm -hmm. cup Epsom salt, half a cup baking soda and lavender. And that just you know, the combination of the magnesium and the Epsom salt mm -hmm. and the lavender and the oil is very calming. So if, if you just kind of have a kid that needs a little bit of calming at night, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a calm blend and a sleep blend that are good. If it's slightly more complicated, you know, we talked about kind of being in balance with the right rhythms. Sometimes our sleep rhythm, which we call our circadian rhythm, gets a little thrown off. And that can happen when... Um, our, our sleep cycle, the, the sleep hormone melatonin, works in tandem with the stress hormone cortisol. They have kind of an antagonistic relationship. So if you're anxious or wired and your body is releasing all of this cortisol, it's a little bit like a teeter-totter. Cortisol is high. That forces melatonin to be low, mm -hmm. which makes sense because if there was an actual emergency, you wouldn't want to fall asleep. You'd mm -hmm. want the energy to survive. So... 
we have one oil that we call circadian rhythm. And what it does is it triggers the part of your brain that releases melatonin, mm -hmm. the pineal gland to naturally release melatonin. And this works really well for kids that are kind of okay through the day. And then they just have this huge anxiety spike at night. They get really anxious. They start getting OCD. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they need one more glass of water or one more book. They just, they can't settle down. So this blend circadian rhythm helps them really settle down and calm down. And it's also a great backdoor for kind of helping to manage anxiety mm -hmm. because it releases that sleep hormone, which is a bit of an anti-anxiety hormone. And then it kind of mm -hmm. puts them back in balance. So that's challenges falling asleep. When you wake up in the middle of the night, it can be different things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of moms after they have babies have blood sugar wake up. So it's 1 a.m. We are wide awake. We could go clean the kitchen. Nothing's getting us back to sleep. So what's happening is the blood sugar dipped a little low and the adrenals released kind of the emergency blood sugar hormone and then we're wide awake. And so if you think of how body naturally handles that, the pancreas is what kind of helps move the blood sugar out of the blood and into the cells. So we have an oil that supports the pancreas. And so in doing that and helping to get all that extra high alert energy out of the system, it helps you fall back asleep. And then the other time that people wake up is kind of around 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. And that's usually when your liver and your detoxification organs are just working a little bit too hard. Mm -hmm. So anything you can do to support the liver, be it taking some kind of binder before mm -hmm. you go to bed, or we have an oil for the liver and the gallbladder that just helps give them like a little extra support so that the liver can relax and let us sleep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You've mentioned um, a couple different ways of using them. I want to just highlight for parents who maybe have had no exposure to essential oils and like, well, what do I do with them? Do I just like dump the bottle on them? You mentioned putting yeah. it on the feet. What are some of the best ways to actually use or apply the oils with children? Yeah, first of all, less is more. Don't ever dump the bottle. You know, maybe take like one drop. And if you're, if you've never put it on your child before, dilute it. You can just use olive oil or coconut oil from your kitchen. But it, it, people make it incredibly complicated. You can just, you know, use your hand. Put like a teeny bit of coconut oil in your hand and one drop of, say, lavender, and then just mix it with your finger mm -hmm. and then put it on the bottom of their feet. You don't ever want to put it like, um, you know, if, if someone's having an eczema eruption or something, mm -hmm. don't put essential oils on damaged skin. Don't put it on cuts because if it's damaged, that means that it's going to get into your system faster. Mm -hmm. So the bottom of the feet is the safest place to apply it because the, the skin is pretty thick. And then also there are a lot of um, reflex points that affect other areas of the body. Mm -hmm. So if you're an essential oil newbie, dilute it, put it on the bottom of the skin and just, you know, go slow. It's kind of like a haircut, right? If you cut too much, you can't grow back. You can always cut more, yeah. you know, start with less and you can always layer on more if you want to. Yeah. Um, and then the way we use oils is we find that there are certain reflex points and organ points that if you put the oils directly on top of the organ, they seem to assimilate into the system more quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what you were talking about, like with the liver, or the gallbladder, or even kids. Like I know sometimes if they're having a tummy ache, like putting it, yeah. they can put it right on the spot where they have the tummy ache or like a tension exactly. headache or those kinds of things. Exactly. Exactly. And for the tummy, I always tell them to kind of rub it around the belly button clockwise. Mm -hmm. That seems to work. But, you know, we've tested clockwise, counterclockwise. For some reason, clockwise seems to work better. Awesome. And I know a lot of kids who do really well with kind of like a massage on their feet before bed, throw some socks on, um, you yeah. know, over it. And that's part of the bedtime ritual or after school ritual or whatever. It's this nice time of connection with your kids too. Um, and that in and of itself is, helps to calm and regroup and all of that. Yeah. And actually my son used to have some sensory things. So one of the things we learned, if you pull push, twist, twist with like fingers or toes and you can teach them to do that. It's really calming. Yeah. My kids used to love that. So I would like integrate that in with the foot massage. Great. Talk just briefly because um, we could go on and on. There's so many other questions I have, but we're gonna have to wrap up here shortly. But I do want to make sure that we touch on the issue of quality with oils because yeah. they are so popular right now. They're everywhere. And, you know, I'll have parents come into the clinic and say, oh, you know, I found this on the shelf at the local, you know, chain dollar store or whatever. And um, I, I know that there's a big difference quality wise. So can you speak to that for a moment? 
Yeah, absolutely. And first of all, I mean, I, again, I don't want to get too much into scare tactics. Sure. It's kind of like if you find an apple at a 7-Eleven, it's probably not organic, but right. you know, it's, it's, a, it's an apple. Um, I, I, what I like about organics, they're so concentrated. Oils are so, so concentrated. So if they're grown with a lot of pesticides or chemicals, you're kind of concentrating all of those pesticides mm -hmm. and chemicals. And that's my concern, especially you know, so many of us who have health challenges, it's, it's a little bit like toxic overload. Mm -hmm. So you really want to make sure you're not layering that into it. But um, I also think, trust your sense of smell. I think that the, the toxic ones, you know, if you go into the mall and some of those candle stores, you're like, oh my God. Instant you know. migraine for me. <laughs> I know, I know. But I think, I think a lot of people have a good sense. Yeah. Of, you know. Yeah. And there are awesome. a lot of good trusted brands. Yeah, for sure. Great. Um, this has been so helpful to give people a good introductory understanding of what these are and how to use them. I want to make sure that they know where to find more information from you because not only do you have your awesome products online, but you've got great information available. So um, what do you have to share with people? How can they find you? They can find me at Vibrant Blue Oils. And if they have any questions, they can email us at info at Vibrant Blue Oils. And I was telling you, I made a um, essential oil guide for families that was mostly for myself and my friends because I, I couldn't really find um, just a you know beginner's guide that gave a good overview of all the things I was interested in for my kids. And it's got some great tips like you know what we use. Um, I have a spray bottle you know to prevent lice. It's just mm -hmm. essential oils. So. We got lice once. That's kind of my thing. We make a mistake once and then we don't do it again and went to that expensive lice place and realized, oh my gosh, they're just using essential oils. I can uh -huh. <laughs> and you know, you get those scary emails and you're like, nope, we're good. We haven't had it since. So those awesome. kinds of things, just really um, quick and dirty, easy tools to right. use. Practical tips, which we can all use. So people can go to Vibrant Blue Oils then and download that. And we'll have the specific link for that with the show notes along with that so that you can easily find that. Jody also has an amazing um, book called Healing with Essential Oils that has tons of great information if you want to delve more into that. And they can find that probably on Amazon or on your website as well, right? Yeah, Amazon. Wonderful. Um, Jody. thank you so much for being with us on the show today. I know this information was super helpful for people. So thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next time on our next episode of the Better Behavior Show.